live on this Tuesday morning. Going to have a little coffee and uh, be joined by internet personality and two-time titleist and five-time Weber Cup titleist. And that will be a topic of discussion today. Uh, Beef Stew, how are you after a busy weekend in Houston? Um, less rich, I guess. <laughs> I mean, not rich is the wrong word. <laughs> Less uh, solvent, maybe. Less <laughs> solvent, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, there was actually quite a few guys that showed up, and, uh, and a fair amount of action over the weekend. And uh, um, yeah, and as it happens, um, I mean, I guess the singles on the Saturday wasn't really a shock. Nathan Ball has been bowling fantastic. Um, the last three or four weeks. Um, but, um, but I mean, he beat Justin Bowie in the final, but like, uh, Jacob missed the step ladder. Just, uh, AJ Rice didn't cash. Uh, hmm. well, no, I don't think he cashed. Carl Troop bowled. He was 15th, I think. Um, so he didn't make the finals either. I didn't make the finals. Lavery Spa didn't make the finals. Uh, Maldonado, um, he made the cut, but he didn't make the step ladder. DJ, I think, was in a similar spot. No, I think DJ just missed. So, um, so yeah, it was a it was a bit of an odd um, odd scenario yeah. um, the way it came down. Um, and then um, and then on top of that, we bowled the doubles on Sunday, and they had uh, they had to pivot a little bit because, uh, there was a, I think there was a slight miscommunication with the bowling center. So we ended up bowling the house shot, which me and Anthony thought was a good thing for us. Um, <laughs> we might be the only pro bowlers who were happy about that scenario, but you know, we'd seen us bowl yesterday, the day before. So, um, yeah, so, uh, we, uh, we didn't really do ourselves justice. We put ourselves in a good position with five frames to go and probably needed to go minus 10 or something to make it. And we managed to go minus 30 in the last five frames. So that was good. And then uh, two guys from Louisiana uh, shocked the world and uh, and won. And I think if they'd have done the Calcutta uh, with just the 10 teams that were left, they might have been ninth or 10th to be picked, I would think. Um so that was cool. Uh, the one game shootout, I believe they shot 492. Um, AJ Chapman had had a chance, um, but didn't get the strike, which actually shocked me because another guy who I think has been bowling quite well the last five or six weeks, certainly been throwing a lot of shots when he's needed them. Um, I guess this was just one of those things. So um, Jacob, amusingly, one of my friends had bought Jacob's team in the Calcutta. He was born with Caitlin Johnson. Caitlin bowled 258. Jacob had seven nine spares in a row. Wow. So, uh, yeah, that was just a few of the uh, the uh, highlights um, from my weekend. Um, I believe that you were the grill master this weekend. I, uh, yeah, I spent a little time, uh, you know, killing meat and, uh, we had a, we had a pool day. So yeah. over the weekend and, uh, after reading and watching a little bit, uh, online, I, I didn't feel like I terribly missed out on a lot. It would be very difficult for you to do something on July the 4th, other than grill burgers and brats. And, oh, I almost disappeared. I'm yeah, sorry. you broke up. Yeah, something about burgers and brats. So yeah, I was like, with you being Captain America, it would be a little <laughs> difficult for you not to observe July Fourth uh, in the traditional way. Um, I at least got to uh, continue my tradition because internet sucks. I guess it's my internet that's causing the trouble today, Chris. I uh... yeah, we had issues here yesterday. Frontier was struggling, and the and I heard that was a common thing, kind of around the country. It maybe I don't know if it's heat based or what it's based off of, but uh, sounds like it was not terribly uncommon. But um, but like I was just saying, we were quite fortunate because the first game we were down by the bar, so I got to uh, do uh, my uh, favorite thing. 
which is on July 4th, which is watch Joey, Joey, Joey. <laughs> Joey Chestnut set the world record for the hot dog eating. Is there anything more America than the hot dog eating contest? I don't think so. I don't know. It's disgusting, actually. I can't imagine eating. <laughs> the, the one lady, we got a kick out because the one lady was like, she was 60 years old. And she looked a little bit like my mother-in-law did when she was 60 years old. And she managed to knock out about eight in the 10 minutes. <laughs> and uh, she was at a leisurely pace. She was, she was asking for mustard relish. <laughs> we got a little laugh out of that one. But, uh, yeah, Chestnut and those guys just knocking out. 75. How fast can you go throw up? I mean, just most dominant athlete, athlete in North American history. They put up the stat. He's got 13 titles. Jordan and Brady between them only have 12. <laughs> um, so we've got uh, Friday night, the big match, uh, Texas versus Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. There you go. I think, I think that uh, Texas might actually win, which is – in recent times, quite unusual between in battles between Texas and Oklahoma. <laughs> that's that's somewhat fair, um, but I would say that uh, Texas start as a strong favorite. Um, but you know, the uh, the Longhorns have beaten uh, the Sooners a couple of times in the last five years, so I guess anything's possible. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's in their place. It's in a split sided center. Uh, half of it's wood, half of it's synthetics. So there's some, you know, it, it's almost like going to New York without having to go all the way to New York. There's plenty of scam involved in this, but uh, and you bowl in, you bowl in a game and a half. And yeah, you, and it's very it's short fun. on top of it. So sounds uh, like fun. Um, yeah, I mean, I still think I, I, it seems still kind of like a cool match, and so. Uh, I will tell it goes. The uh, the SASPA that was going along with it is no longer. Uh, it, it was canceled for this weekend. So, um, you know, it is what it is. We'll probably still go up and have a little fun and then drive back. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It would have. Uh, uh, fortunately, most of the guys on your team, I think, are in the Dallas or Fort, well, well, Dallas area. Yeah, so. on the northern side of. Uh, so it should yeah, make it. It's really like a team Dallas versus team Oklahoma City more than it is anything. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that had been brought up. Oh yeah. Well, Kelly uh, Ray, you know, he's he spent the entire time since Longview where he was basically, uh, I don't know, wounded. I guess it'd be the <laughs> he could barely walk, and I don't think he's pulled since then. And he spent the whole week on the beach, so he should be ready. Um, so. Coming in strong, yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't think it'll dent his confidence, though. I, it's probably correct. <laughs> I'll say. Yeah, I, 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 no problems. Um, uh, Rich says need uh, some low end balls for dry. Thinking PBR and wrap. Um, I think the hustle wrap is probably mm. going to fit the dry mode. The hustle PBR is uh, is sneaky for the price point. I think it's actually um, a little stronger than you think. Um, I think it's uh, mini phase two, like the ball below the phase two, rather than for dry. So I I see the uh, PBR as more of a um, um, viper type pattern, like those sort of medium patterns where the Phase two, maybe on the first game, hooks a bit too much. It's kind of like that, smoother. Uh, Dan Young says, hey, guys, tried to get Simonelli on for an episode. Yeah, it's interesting. He uh, he made an announcement yesterday. And, uh, you know, after a fairly lengthy career, and I just actually changed staffs and decided that, that this whole thing kind of uh, changed his whole outlook, and and I think it's happened to to a few guys, uh, especially the guys that are in the middle right now. Um, yeah, it's definitely uh, if you've got the opportunities, it's uh, definitely um, definitely a, a not not a bad choice to be able to uh, do something different at the minute. Um, 
I think that maybe the fact that the company he was with might have done it because they were trying to establish their brand. And obviously this is not the optimum time to be trying to do that. So I don't know whether that, what that means for big bowling or what they're going to do, but uh, fingers crossed. Cause I don't think that the bowling industry needs to get smaller again. So. No, probably not. Uh, it, it says something when a guy who's has had uh, success, like, like Ryan has, I mean, he's eight titles and, and some big time wins and shows and, uh, you know, he decides to go a different direction. It, it does make news, especially in, a, in an era like this where there's not really anything else to talk about. Uh, uh, we grabbed some headlines yesterday for sure. Uh, here's one that's fun. Uh, so we've got Greg Wright saying hook him. <laughs> um, Texas definitely favored, but go team Oklahoma. <laughs> he, he does He does have some – some uh, skin in the game there. Uh, since Tim Denny, it, it, he owns the center there in Holiday and at Holiday Lanes. And so, uh, uh, man, I've bowled in the center before. The last time I bowled there, I was a college student. And uh, they used to bowl these things called PTPs there. There's a $50 entry fee for $750 for first. Nice. Uh, yeah, big money, which uh, that day, <laughs> those days in college, $750 paid a lot of bills uh, living on string. So, yeah, it, it's been it was interesting. <laughs> well, yeah, a nice play on words there. Um, so, uh, Matthias Ankadal, um, hello from Denmark. Uh, who do you guys think is most underrated? To, underrated who hasn't won a title? So that rules out AJ Johnson because he's yeah. underrated. He's not underrated. So, um, so after that. Um, I don't know because it depends how far you go as underrated. I mean, because I think Martin Martin doesn't really fit in that gap either because I don't necessarily think that he's – No, he's been out there for a while. It's basically somebody you don't think about that you think will win soon. Um, you know, you probably can't go with Kyle Sherman either because he doesn't really have a title yet. But uh... – I mean, I think that Brad Miller's a bit underrated. I think he's been bowling extremely well, and I think that – if he didn't do the Brad and Kyle blog thing, I think that more people would recognize his bowling. Like more of the people who were talking about, maybe more of our age group would be talking about him. So I'm going to say Brad Miller. Yeah, that's not bad. I, I would, and, and this is not a terrible call, except he's gotten a lot of love here lately. So uh, uh, for what he has done, it, he's been uh, – He's he's actually getting plenty of uh, of love from the crowd. So, um, gosh, uh, uh, right here we go. So Vince Biondo saying so more than an IQ tour. Um, he's talking about the PBR. Uh, no, different. Um, I think it's a little cleaner and smoother. I think the IQ tour is with it being low RG. Tends to, I don't really know where an IQ tour fits because it seems to be different every time I throw one. But the IQ tour for me is more whippy. Um, so take that for what it's worth, Vince. I think that the, I, I find the IQ tour hard to use on fresh because I think it's too angular. So that's probably yeah. why I'm why I'm struggling because I can't use that ball and people are using it again. So. Um. Kristen Anderson, will there be any bowling events in August waiting to hear whether or not the summer swing? Well, no, I don't think so. There's no summer swing. Uh, I think that's all. Yeah. That, that's The summer swing's been officially canceled, so there's none, none of that going to happen, whether we have – I mean, basically at this point, I think about the only thing on the table is the PBA League – uh, possibly the Masters, the finale of the World Series shows, and the playoffs, I think, might all get combined together at some point. But I would look for that to be way closer to the end of the year. But we have to wait for Fox to basically settle all their other sports and TV slots, and then after that, then we'll kind of find out where, where we fit. And also – who knows what's going to happen next week 
never mind two months away. Uh, Ronald says more like like life like the idol. No, the idol's way stronger. I think the idol's stronger than the phase two. So um, it's definitely earlier than the phase two. But um, yeah, no. Um, look at this. My yeah. favorite role of Chris Barnes. My guy. There we go. Go. Uh, pull on a shark pattern league tomorrow night. Any suggestions? Throw it slow. <laughs> Draw your imaginary gutter at about eight. Yeah, if you have the Brunswick, actually, yeah, depending on your rev rate, but uh, depend, if you have the, the Brunswick Pro Ambulance with the, the tracers down there, the imaginary gutter, it gets pretty close to uh, to that tracer down lane on, on the 10th board. So higher rev rates can go just around it. If you control your speed, uh, you can get just around that. Otherwise, it gets can be even to, to the inside of that. And I guess also no. which version of shot they've got because it's been well, yeah, 76 times. It has changed a bunch. So Sibo, uh, and he knows the answers to these pretty good. This guy's a really good bowler. But uh, two-inch pins from the axis on 37 foot, probably so, because uh, controlling the shape on 37 feet, that's kind of like the depth distance. Uh, the gutter doesn't really play, but it pushes you close to the track. So if you're in a place that has any kind of uh, track dominance or any kind of age on it, uh, you basically have no left on that pattern either. And so uh, being able to trap it in between and keep it in that zone between five and 10 and be able to play fairly straight is key for a couple of games until they break down. One thing I will say about with two inch pins is ball choice is quite um, important with those. Don't, don't drill like a high road pearl, for example, with a two inch pin. Like you gotta get something that kind of complements the layout. Like I think that kind of smoother balls. Um, what's that blue and uh, blue and black ball that Global have that you've used quite a lot? Uh, after dark. No, 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 no. The one that you used on the show in uh, Jonesboro on the long. Jonesboro. Oh, the ordinance. Yeah. yeah. Something ORG 040 yeah. diff. Yeah, a, a low to medium diff. That's a good. Yeah, that's a good option as far as something that that can clear the front and be pretty rolly, pretty smooth, especially yeah. with that's like a two inch pin. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. I, I just don't think it's a good idea to necessarily choose like angular balls and then put a two Ooh. on it. It's they're, they're like kind of fighting each other. Then right it ends up getting really confused. I think that's a great point too, and not that we want to get into a huge ball discussion, but. I find a lot of people taking balls that are supposed to be kind of heavy oil balls and controllable and then trying to put tall pins and shine them up. And, and I just think making balls fight against each other makes them very, very niche. Uh, yeah. And, and if you have, you know, when you're on tour, those niche balls come into play a lot. Mm -hmm. But in general, in a, if, if you're taking six balls to some place or and you want to cover bases, those kind of things. I try and take big cores with, with strong covers and put some surface on them so it all goes together versus working them away from each other. How, how'd you say it, Chris? I'm right here, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. uh, who gets picked uh, for the ladies? Uh, two pens. I, I don't know. What that um, is. Huh? Who gets to pick? ladies for the two pens oh um uh bob learn and uh kim kearney terrell don't know which is the right name uh kearney kearney yeah. there you go so then that, that was her uh her, her u.s open winning name but uh kim kearney is now her and eric are, are big time movers and shakers so um, here's Danny uh, from England. He says, hi, Chris. Chris, are the new rollable, how are the new rollables rolling? Yeah, the new global balls are, uh, are actually looking pretty good. Uh, I've had a chance to throw them for the last two weeks, uh, and uh, I, I'm, I'm not disappointed. So I think that uh, they will be a nice addition to what I already have, and then moving forward, uh, you know, I, I think they will be predictably very good. So, um, do you want to just give people 
just an idea of which uh, uh, ranges everything fits in? So. Yeah, and basically just off the top, uh, they basically made four balls uh, that fit different gaps. You have a giant big ASIM ball with a big cover on it uh, and a new volatility. Uh, it comes shiny. Uh, I will probably not have it shiny because I'm going to use it as a heavy oil kind of with that much ASIM, it'll be a, more of a control ball for me for uh, for players with more access rotation. It, you know, it so will. just as we're doing this, I will uh, quickly. Uh, where is it? I just look there. It is. Um, so just quickly. So um, I think that the, these two are the. Um, the uh, afterburners. So yeah, they, uh, that's, those are the new boosts, and that's going to be the low end ball for drier lanes. Uh, pretty angular, actually. I think the difference from the old boosts is they're going to they're going to be a little stronger. I think they're going to be more usable uh, on tour patterns, even uh, it seems. And so, uh, uh, well, we're not really doing commercials on them yet because they're not even. Uh, uh, approved they're submitted for approval uh, uh we're just i'm just trying to really get um basically trying to explain to people where they fit so yeah the, uh, this is uh which one is this one the green and purple one that's the volatility that's going to be your your high performance ball right uh the one the the blue and orange one is the aspect and that's a symmetrical with a fairly strong cover that's going to be that uh, strong kind of benchmark type ball where uh, so that, and that's obviously the one I like the most. Is that uh, fit in the ordinance? That will be the, yeah, it, that'll fit in that kind of category. It, the covers a little stronger Price and it plays a little more too. So it's, it's going to be okay. a little bit stronger overall. And then of course there's another badger. Of course there is another badger and it's right. slightly asymmetrical. Uh, it's not a two piece like before. So the 15s and 16s are, are much closer. So if you're throw 15, this badger will hook more than the old badgers will, uh, and be quite a bit stronger. And if you throw 16s, it will be, uh, a slightly weaker core, but the cover will be a, a little bit uh, more aggressive. So for me, it fits in, uh, well, the white badger is probably the most popular one overall. Uh, 15 pounders. This one's going to hook probably three to four more than that one did. Okay, so there we go. Just uh, a little plug. Uh, we'll have some uh, once we get the go ahead. We'll have some videos up with Chris, and uh, I'll uh, uh, try my camera skills. I've got a little bit of a handheld deal, so we'll see how that uh, see how that works out. Um... Take on C. I don't know who's C, S E E, in horseshoes. Yeah, I haven't played a whole lot of horseshoes. I've done a little bit, and I've watched Walter do it. That's uh, that's fairly impressive. Uh, uh, yeah, and a lot of throw it through his screen. Wow. What's that? A lot of people watch him do it on Facebook as well. It's crazy. God damn. <laughs> 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 Walter Ray is literally my hero again now. His Facebook is on fire. He goes he goes to practice and it's uh yeah. Uh Drew Parkin, thoughts on today's draft. Well, it's at uh four o'clock Eastern. Um yeah, I uh I picked your wife. Um I think that's the main thing you want to know. When uh when we did our draft, I believe both me and Steve both picked your wife. Um yeah, I mean, I feel like there's probably five definites, and then <laughs> uh, like 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 with the men's draft, there's just a few less picks, so it might not get as much over the all over the map as it is. Um, be interested. My main interest in it is to see what the situation is with the Asian players because there's a couple of them who I think should be picked in the top ten. But how is that going to be? How is that going to go with you know travel restrictions? I think that's probably the most interesting part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody had asked uh, 
Uh, that's the answer to that question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Dasha probably will be. She was third in the points. So, uh, uh, yeah, I think 10 of them will get picked and, the, and they'll all get to bowl. So, well, I hope so. Because if they get to bowl, that means we get to bowl. Yep. Um, Carlton was asking uh, for three balls, um, uh, like to name three balls that would work out. So I think that ordinance would work out quite well. Yeah, I think you're looking, generally speaking, you're looking for balls with RGs under 255, probably closer to 52 or less, and diffs that are probably less than 045. Because you're already trying to control the flare anyway, so uh, yeah, I, I would say that it would be something along the lines of for 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 our brands, it would be maybe the idle might be a little strong. You might go to a, like a one and a half inch pin with an idle that ordinance, um, and then you know from from the other side maybe something like a game breaker. Um, they would be the balls that I would look at. Think about the balls that are like the like kind of smooth um multi-use balls like that they're, they're kind of the things that you would expect to use um yeah and, and you don't really want to go with a super weak cover because then it when you, like if you go with like low end balls say a hustle or or after dark sometimes then they just don't really pick up mm -hmm. you got skid with no no flare either and so then they kind of become a dart and you're not looking for that either but uh uh, yeah, I've used ordinance, both the ordinances kind of like that. I used to use the X's like that a little bit, um, which are lower flare balls that, that kind of fit into that range for me. Um, um, yeah, people are asking us about patterns and stuff. Uh, Greg's saying 37 radium sports shot. Uh, what, what global balls were, I would I mean. <laughs> Kind of what we're saying. I mean, maybe maybe your best bet would be a booyah. I mean, it yeah, really, and that's going to go to because you're looking to control it. That's just that's a tough, tough, tough distance. So your thing is certainly in play there, unless you have a still set like Liz who can really control it on her own. Uh, you're going to play fairly straight. Crossing zones is going to be ugly. Playing the track early is going to be ugly. Getting it right a five is going to be ugly. So <laughs> being able to play six, seven, eight, uh, it's probably a good thing this didn't show up because if she did, you would have gotten beat by about a hundred with that score. So that is, uh, she is, she uh, is really good on that kind of stuff. Uh, Trey is asking, have you covered the match? Yeah, we covered it briefly. In my own biased opinion, I think that. Uh, Texas is going to run wild. So, yeah, um, I don't think it's going to be as much as. Uh, but I also know that um, uh, we're bowling on a house shot, and I've watched Chris and Anthony bowl two or three tournaments recently on a house shot together, and they've got beaten by a lot of people. <laughs> so, <laughs> well. <laughs> Yeah. I haven't scared anybody. Kelly's Kelly's walking on one leg. We do have CJ's pretty good on the house shot too. Um, yeah, no, he's he, and he's actually been bowling quite well in um, the the limited things he's been bowling. And we're at Tim uh, Denny's center. Uh, you know, split sided house, like I said, wood and synthetics. There's some house knowledge there that's going to be probably come into play, and it's not a super long format. So who's the fifth one for for Texas? Tony Franklin. Tony Frank. Oh no, that no, that's the guy. Now, if this was at Plano, <laughs> Chris and Tony would be. Uh, they probably wouldn't need a fifth guy. They could probably win with any four if those two played together at uh, Plano. Um, Steph would definitely have been bowling if it was at Plano. She she would have been like. Chris would have been like to uh, Johnson. Would have been to you. Uh, sorry, Barney. Can, can, can you watch the kids for an hour for me? <laughs> uh, There's rumor of a CJ and Pete match happening afterwards. Pete Thomas. So I don't know if that's true or not. But uh, I don't know. They were quite entertaining on the SASPA board yesterday, if anybody wants to go and uh, check it out. 
Oh, were they? I didn't. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, piss that. in the patch, I believe, is the phrase that is technically used for it. The what? It was a pissing match. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is interesting. Uh, Gary Parsons, uh, Larry Basham, he came and spoke at Team USA. He's a shooter, and uh, uh, he's an interesting dude. Uh, but uh, uh, sports kind of management expert, that's okay. Um, I think if we're talking about the same guy, but 5% of the great players win 95% of the time, and then that's true in his sport because the targets don't move. And there's not there's a very limited amount of variables in his sport. It it, uh, it does change a little bit for bowling. And uh, but when you're the top player, and when I was in that in that range, I felt I felt like I didn't. If I played my best, that the rest of the things kind of took care of itself. Uh, you know, depending on where you're at in the overall scheme of things, I think there's way more variables that come into play for that to uh, for you to compete with, say. Now Jason Belmonte is is in that Don Carter range, and he's not really bowling against a whole lot of other guys. I'd say he ain't worried about fifteen or sixteen guys. I can tell you that he bowls good. He's making the show, and and that's uh, that's kind of where I feel like uh, I'm at at times with that as or was at at least uh, as well. And so, um, and it's basically because they they just see it better. They make better shots. Uh, sometimes it's not measurable. And with short formats, that number goes from 15 and 16 to maybe 25 to 30. But in general, in every era, those top, you know, there's two or three guys that make a lot of shows. And generally there's another, like you said, 10 to 12 that fill in a bunch of those other spots and just kind of rotate around. I'd say it probably goes to probably the top 20 generally. Yeah, I think that now, um, as well, there isn't as many, like, specialists either. No. I mean, the, the the exempt tour, you know, 10, 15 years ago took care of a lot of the specialists because they basically, as pattern theories changed, the specialists went away. Now I don't know the argue. Way. The like, point has changed that a little bit now. And, and also, when you don't necessarily rotate the lane guy, and it's not that guy's fault. It would happen no yeah. matter who was doing the lanes. Guys have theories about how to do the lanes, and this they're, they're, they're just it's difficult to for the lanes to be any different, especially with the, how the surfaces are now and everything. Yeah. Um, this this made me snore a little bit. If it was at Plano, Tony and CJ <laughs> and three people from the parking lot, Texas would win. <laughs> That made me laugh a little bit. <laughs> and they would replace me, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh, Cal saying, if you could bowl doubles with any bowler, active, retired, dead or alive, who would each of you want to bowl with and why? Hmm. How about we do it like this? We'd pick a active bowler and a non-active bowler. Just because it's a bit more fun. Okay. So, I'll go. I would like to bowl with Mark Roth of the non-active bowlers because yeah. Baker's stories were quite fascinating. I'd probably be, tra be traumatized after he finished because he'd break down why I sucked <laughs> mentally, physically, why I was completely inept, and why he'd never bowl with me again. But at the time, it probably would be worth the entry fee. To uh, to wean the knowledge for the three or four hours that you bowled. Yeah, the the three guys that come to mind are are Dick Weber, uh, Mark Roth, and then Marshall Holman. And I think I'd pick Marshall just for the potential train wreck that could happen if we happen to struggle. I felt like if you bowled with Dick Weber, um, it would end up being a little bit like Lee Trevino in Happy Gilmore. <laughs> it's quite possible I would behave myself if I was born. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, if I was born with an active bowler, I think it'd be double Frankie because um, I, I don't know. 
if you if you bowl in doubles, it's like it, it's it's nice to bowl. It's nice to win with someone who you, you good good friends with, and you can like you know bounce off. So that's who I'd pick. Well, if it's ten years ago, Tommy and I. But uh, yeah, since we never bowled them, <laughs> then uh, does Walter count as active or inactive? I guess so. active. Yeah, he's active. <laughs> Oh, well, then no. No. Um, maybe the senior 50, yeah. <laughs> well, we've come past the half hour point and uh, it's gone by really fast. Uh, but I have a Weber Cup thing to film in 20 minutes. and uh, But I do have to tell you about a busy week on mine and Chris's channels. So uh, today I'm hopefully getting into the bowling center around 12 o'clock. Uh, so, uh, an hour and a half time, uh, I'm going to do a Facebook live, um, reminding all you folks that the, uh, a, uh, Axiom and the nuclear cell are still available, still great. And we'll, uh, get, get on that train. Um, then Chris is doing his, uh, Tuesday morning action coffee morning. Uh, yeah, it actually may. I got a note here just as we got on that Dimitri was uh, he, he made an emergency room visit this morning in the middle. Oh, okay. So we may not be on. We'll have to. I will. Uh, if we do, it will be about one o'clock central. Okay. Uh, I am not positive at this point what's going to happen. So we'll and do then, our best to get it out. But and four o'clock. Uh, Eastern five o'clock central is the PWBA draft. Um, so that's on. And then Wednesday, um, I'm going to have a ghost match, I guess is the, is the pool term for it. But, uh, me and Kyle troop are going to have a, we're going to have a standoff. I think it's going to be at two o'clock central. We're just, we're just finalizing lane availability and what's worked with the bowling centers and whatever. Is back home? He's home. I'm home. We're just going to put out the house China, see who can strike the most in our respective bowling centers. I think I think the rules for it are he's going to use the Axiom and I'm going to use the nuclear cell. We've each got a couple, so we should be able to make it kind of entertaining. And then uh, Thursday morning. Yes, William, I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. <laughs> of course, it's 3 o'clock central, not 5 o'clock central. The um that's that's for the that's for the draft. Um if okay. it's four o'clock cent if it's four o'clock eastern, it doesn't get late central. Um on Thursday we've got EJ Tackett finally joining the show. Um the last member of uh, Chris's Weber Cup team. So uh yeah, so a busy middle of the week on the Beef and Barnsley channels. Yeah, he may not like it much better, but he hopefully likes it better than he did when he was small with Sean. So, we'll see. Can't like it much less. He gave you plenty of points the last time around. I saw that, that Europe has already, some people already chipped in about how good he was for Europe last time. <laughs> well, I mean, at this point, what else do we have? I mean, you're like a minus, like, I don't know, minus 450 favorite, I would think. Oh, no, no. Right. We're in your home country, Sue. It's, we're, we're probably just oh, going yeah, yeah, yeah. to yeah. be even money. So, we'll so yellow plus blue equals green. I mean, it's right there. It's, it's right there. Green with envy, perhaps, but green nonetheless. <laughs> Make it rain. So. <laughs> All right. Well, I All right, take care. Much appreciated. And we will be back at you on Thursday, 10 a.m. with EJ Tackett.